Sage loses this evening. Technically still isn't eliminated, but here's his opponent though, the Zerg player who has been eliminated. There's no way he can come back. Just playing for his own pride right now. Whoa, what's going on there? Someone drew a comic on their chair pool and shot a guy with a sword in the face, apparently. <laughs> Alright. That's kind of cool. And here's our Protoss player. If he wins this, he keeps himself alive and ties himself for first. Well, genius um, was able to beat Zenio last time Zenio played. Zenio was actually done only all ins today. First two times, uh, he did it of his own accord. First one against Gumiho, and then the next one um, against Puzzle. And now he. Then he played against Genius, and Genius forced him into doing an all in by cannon blocking him. And now yeah. in his fourth game here against Sage, we'll see if he has to do an all in or not. Because he is the Hongan of Zerg. <laughs> you know, next, True, like, man. Next, like this time he all ends with roaches, and it looks like Sage is gonna hold, but then the roaches start blinking back, and we're like, whoa, what's going on? The roaches just keep blinking. It's like you can't blink with roaches, and Zenio's like, I can. Too bad there's no other Zergs in this group because Zenio also is pretty all in ish against Zergs, but he actually wins with it. It's true. Which he hasn't done yet so far, and it's all ends in this group. But uh, he is droning up pretty hard and uh, didn't get gas, to get speed or anything like that. So he's just gone pool first to be a little bit safe and is trying to transition out of it into a more of econ build. Yeah, he saw his opponent didn't go for an early pool, so he made his nexus after the forge. Without making a cannon, now has started a cannon back at home. He's going to wall it off with a gateway. And I was going to say, did you cancel that? He did decide to cancel that in the last second. He did delay the hatchery ever so slightly. Probe, probe actually away. might get home. It's like a probe. Yeah, I think he's gonna make it. Second probe is gonna go in and do a follow-up scout. This is something Cross has been doing so much recently that I really like. If you make the second follow-up scout, you can always be ready for everything, especially yeah. when you've watched Zenio play three yeah. games and all in each game. You might want to yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. I'd like to. I remember that's something that Oz did a lot in yeah. his code A run. Uh, He's very, very strong against the Zerg players that he faced because of that. And the probe did make it home, except, by the way. Except to force Curious. Yeah, the games against Curious were not very impressive. Notice the probe skirting the outside of the creep so it can get a little bit farther. The Zerglings couldn't catch it on creep, but as soon as they got on creep, the Zerglings were a little bit faster and could well, catch the it. The trade-off to that is if you stay off creep, you can't really see anything. You can't actually anything. see the buildings, yeah. it's true. <laughs> Unless he put something around the edges. One of the reasons why you often see um, Zerg players put their Tech building's kind of in the back of their base, in the back of their middle line. Well, he was able to scout the gases of Zenio before, so I'm a little bit surprised he even sent that second one in, because if there's no gas, I mean, what could he do? He's not, he gets in the base, he's like, he made two spawning pools. What? <laughs> he like, gets, like, all prepared, he, like, makes extra cannons. <laughs> there's nothing really else to see at the base, except to see if the That's hatchery true. was canceled. That's and then true. even if the hatchery was canceled, he'd be like, what? Why'd you cancel the hatchery? That doesn't make any sense. So it was a little bit weird that he sent a second probe scout in. Um, I guess he could find out if he's making a lot of drones, or if he's well, making he a lot could, of Zerglings, I don't know. Yeah, he could have made a lot of Zerglings. But he, this is what this is what I was going to say. This is oh, what he needed okay. to check. If there's a fast third base, that's exactly what he wanted to see. And now he's seen it. He could have made gas in a Roach Warren, I guess, or something like that. But point being, you just want to keep an eye on what your opponent's doing yeah, at it's all good, times. It's always good to have as much scout information as you can. It's not good to get your Zealot caught when he's not against the wall. Nice micro on the Zealot, but even so, Zenio's micro is better. Oh. Does end up losing wow. three Zerglings there to the Zealot. Not too bad. Not too good either, but... <laughs> could have gone better, could have gone worse. Yeah. I think I'll go ahead and take the middle road opinion on this one. Well, the Stalker now is going to be able to kill even more Zerglings because the Stalker and Zerglings have the same movement speed. He's actually going to go poke at this queen just to be annoying. Oh, 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 the Zergling's gonna trap it! Oh. oh! He may be able to escape with this, but it's not gonna be easy. Oh! Oh, some good juking by Sage with that Stalker, but oh, Xenio is almost on top of it. It's gonna get away. It might take some hits in retreat. Remember, they have the same movement speed. 
Zergling speed is still not about to finish, so I think he's just barely going to be able to get home. The shields recharge on that. Touchdown! And, and the Zerglings... <laughs> <laughs> I think the Zerglings lost sight of the Stalker for a moment in the fog, and so they stopped chasing. I'm not sure. Maybe Xenio actually just stopped him there at the Watchtower. Well, this Overlord wants to get some scouting in the main base of Sage does get taken out by sentries. And he is able to see that three more gateways are being added. Did, did see the Robo as well, actually. So he sees everything. He does not, however, see the, warp the prism. Sage Prism. Usually Sage shows us some awesome Warp Prism play versus Zerg. Interesting. This is really important for him. Oh, is he going to load the sentries yeah, he's in? he's going to load the sentries in. He's going to do a sentry Ooh. drop. Something that we've seen a lot more Zergs do. But... Zenio is preparing for this. He's got a spore crawler going up at his third base. In fact, he's got a spore going up at each base. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, you, by the way, if you guys haven't seen this before, this is something that um, Protoss players uh, do sometimes, and it, it it's really cool if it works properly. You can you can either, one of the things you can do is go into the main base and actually force field their ramp so they can't actually bring reinforcements in, and then you warp in zealots with your warp prism and kill stuff in the main, or you can go for the expansion. It looks like he's going to try and go for the expansion. In this case, sees the spore, turns around, goes for drop a anyways, location. But, gotta be careful. A Stargate is being made right now, as well as a Robotic Support Bay and a Twilight Council, so a lot of tech to have off just two bases for Sage. He's sticking with the four gateways for now. Continues to warp in Zealots. He's seeing the Zealots around the map, try to clean up Zerglings. He knows Zenio is trying to play the drone game here and just skimp on units. And he drops again into the main here, but there are overlords to spot. He's going to pick off an overlord and then probably pick up immediately. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to pick up immediately or lose those sentries to the roaches. The zealots were taken out as well by roaches at the third base, so Sage actually hasn't been able to do a lot of damage to Xenio, and Xenio's pulling ahead in supply. He's about 30 supply up right now. Sage saving up for a third nexus. Hydralis then goes down. Dark Shrine and a Void Ray on the way for Sage. Interesting. Well, he's like going every tech. He's got a he's got a void rate coming. He's got a robotic support bay. He's getting Colossus, and he's getting a Dark Shrine. And an Arbiter Tribunal is <laughs> on the production tab. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a second. Spire and Hydralis then going up. Uh, like all, I said, he, all he needs is a fleet. Yeah, beacon. all he needs is a fleet beacon to complete the tree. Um, Changeling is going to come in here and see perhaps the Dark Shrine if it's not spotted here. But that Overseer already saw it, so it's a matter regardless. And bites the dust as a result. But yeah, saw the Dark Shrine. He saw, I think he probably saw the Robotics Support Bay as well. Yeah, yeah he, he, he saw, saw the, everything. All the tech structures are all in one <laughs> spot, so he was it's able funny. to see everything. Normally as a Zerg player, you, you see what they're doing, and you're like, all right, now I have to make the counter. He's like, well, what do I do if I see everything? What do I do, make everything to counter? <laughs> He does have the uh, Hydra Sten already, and he's getting a Spire, so he is prepared to counter whatever comes yeah. out. And he's actually oh, going he cancels with... the Dark Shrine. Ooh, interesting. And, and adds four gateways. That's probably a smart move. I like the seven Corruptors are in production right now for Xenio, preparing for yeah. Colossi. This gold base is going to have to be canceled, that's for sure. That's that's a really smart move to go with the uh, Corruptors, because then you have those against... Oh, does he cancel it? No. No. Not cancel it. That was a little poor move there, but the Corruptors obviously are going to counter both the Colossi and the Void Ray, so it's really handy to have that group of Corruptors coming around. I like how he only made seven, though. He didn't overmake them. Yeah, that's he doesn't something know a lot exactly, of do by mistake. He doesn't know what Sage is committing to because he only he saw all kinds of different techs, so he's like, alright, well, I don't want to make too many Corruptors because then if he goes yeah. for more Archons, then I'm screwed. Seven is kind of the catch-all. If you make seven, uh, you can kill a Warp Prism, that's for sure, unless the Warp Prism gets away. Nope. nope. Stop moving the He's going to have prism. to use some great force fields here. Pretty good force fields. He's going to pull back away. Look at that. Wow. None of those force fields overlap. Those are actually some of the best force fields I have ever seen. Those force fields just saved his whole army because all the Zerglings were just sitting there up against the force fields. Beautiful force fields on the other side as well. And almost no Zerglings get through. And all those Zerglings were just bunched up against the force fields, not doing anything, dying to Colossus during that whole thing. He just used energy to kill a ton of units, so beautiful trade there by Sage. Almost trapped some roaches, not quite. You get an Overseer here. Oh, canceled um, it. Now, 
Remember, uh, he's actually making 18 Hydras in the background here, but remember, Hydras are not very good off creep, especially when Colossi are out, but he's expecting that Sage will not make very many more Colossi. He actually hasn't even made any more Corruptors, and like I said, 7 is kind of the catch-all number of Corruptors, because if 7 Corruptors, you can target down Colossi in small numbers when the Stalker number is low, and then, of course, after that, you can make them into Broodlords if you didn't need them at all. You know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not too many Corruptors like you said. But in this case, now he's got so many Stalkers, he might actually want a few more Corruptors, yeah. but a few less Hydras. Yeah, because if he just targets down the Corruptors, hold I mean, that thought. Look at this! Force Guys are going to stop these Hydras, they're so slow off creep, they're just not yeah. even going to engage, really. The Stalkers targeting the Lings, though, do not hit the Corruptors, so he does take out the Colossus, which is going to make these Hydras even more effective. But the Hydras might not have enough meat in front of them. There's very few roaches. And they're and just not able to really engage because they're too yeah. slow off creep. Remember, the Stalkers of Sage have Blink. He hasn't even shown that yet. Now he blinks forward. Oh, that's Kills actually... Corruptor. That's a ton of Hydras, but he needs roaches or at least Lings in the front of them to soak up damage and be a little buffer. Otherwise, the Hydras will just get killed too quickly. Now, Xenio has secured the gold base, but he hasn't been able to use it yet. There's no mining going on there. Sage blinks forward again to try to pick off some of these units. He's blinking forward at all the right times. There's only three roaches in this army. It's almost pure Hydra Ling. A few Corruptors in there as well. We're going to deal with this. Another Colossus coming in. Hydra stuck behind Force Fields though. The Stalkers again targeting down the Lings. The Corruptors able to kill off the Colossus because of that targeting. Hydra's just so slow, are not able to do anything though. He's actually trying to run away and losing Hydras and Corruptors in retreat. Yeah, this may be the end for Xenio with another blink forward. He'll kill so many more, and the gold base is now exposed. He's having to pull drones away from there, and that's Xenio's fourth base. If he doesn't mine from this, he's going to be on three base versus three base. Sage with a better army and an even economy. He's actually going to kill this and then blink back. Yeah, and a beautiful position as oh. well. Blinking back the injured stalkers in the front. And will he play. get it? Yeah, he's just going to have a couple Stalkers stick around and finish off the hatchery. It goes down. Xenio is in really poor shape right now because Sage is taking his own gold base. You know, Sage is taking the gold during all of this. He's able to sneak that out. And xenio has got a big ball of units that's pretty much weak to everything that Sage has. He's even got about 9 to 10 drones in that ball of units with gold <laughs> minerals in their mouths. They need to go, uh, go deliver those, man. And, and here we go. We go. This may be the final battle. Supplies are fairly even, but Sage with a much better army. Good blink control. He's actually engaging the Hydras off creep yet again. And I think this is going to be it, man. Sage is just going to win this battle so convincingly. The Corruptor's flying uselessly over this army, which has beautiful force seals. Xenio can never fight the way he wants to. He's off creep. Well, He's got better thing. upgrades, but even so, it just doesn't matter. Here's the thing. He did. If he can fall back a little bit more, he needs to fall back for those 40 Lings in production. He cannot fight without those Lings. He's losing off of his forces before the reinforcements come in and the Corruptors, just two of them left, cannot take out the Colossus fast enough. The Ling reinforcements are going to get taken out by the Colossus and we are going to see a GG from Xenio. Xenio's Sage, going 0-4 in this group. Sage is going to tie himself up. GG! Sage takes a game and now we have a four-way tie. Genius, Puzzle, Sage, and Gumiho, all at two wins and one loss. And Xenio gets trashed, this group. Yeah, man, he actually just... Oh, and four. He is going to be in Code. We'll see him next season. He's going to be so in Code. Uh, he is so in Code. He might as well be in Code B. He's actually going to have to go through the, the first of the danger days as well, and that's probably what he's scared about right now. I mean, Xenio is good enough to maybe make it to the up and down matches for sure. I don't think he'll win Kode, but he's going to have to make it to the up and down, so he's like, well, I'm not out of this. It's, it stinks that I'm not going to get the money next season that I would have liked, yeah. but more importantly, I mean, I might actually just lose in the round of 32. You never know. Yeah. Um, that's scary. You can that be out of the GSL, scary. and you'll only be seen in Team League when your team decides to use you, and... With all the other players that OGS really has to offer, Xenio's career they don't send is him out very really often. affected by this. Yeah. So very dangerous situation for Xenio. But you know what? When you lose all four of your games in the up and down matches, you uh, don't have too many more people to blame but yourself, unfortunately. He just did not play up to snuff today. And, you know, tried some all-ins against players that were good at holding all-ins. Um, and that last game tried to play a good macro game and just made some interesting decisions as far as unit composition Hydra's and times to attack. Ah. So I think we're going to take one more five-minute break, and then we're going to come back for the last two games that are going to determine the winners. See you in a few.